Hello, welcome to Inside the Wubble, part four. I'm here with Leilani Mitchell of the Washington Mystics. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on. How are you, Leilani? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So, Lay, you are one of the many women that I'm talking to about their lives and li lives like in the bubble. And for you, what is what is your experience inside the Wubble been like? Um, it's actually been okay so far. So uh, I, I opted into living in the hotel. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm not dealing with the bugs and all the creatures <laughs> and all that sort of stuff that some of the other girls are dealing with. Right. Um, so it's fine. I mean, you know, I do get a bit bored at times. Mm -hmm. But now that the games, we basically play every other day. So we're quite busy. What is so? What was the decision to go from not being in the villa to just opting into staying in the hotel? Well, why did you decide to do that? Well, like to be honest, so obviously I came from Australia and mm -hmm. I have a family. Um, so, in order for your family to come, we were told they had to come at the very start. Which mm -hmm. um, you know, we were just unsure about how safe the travel was. Mm -hmm. um, and what it was going to be like here because you know my son cash he's only just turned two a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago so he's a toddler with a lot of energy yeah. and you know just the thought of being stuck in one spot and not mm -hmm. really being able to go outside and do things didn't really sit too well so i thought i'd come check it out myself and i did ask for um, a studio apartment but um that was my first option in case they were able to come later for the playoffs or, or mm -hmm. whatever but um there's actually a lot of people here priority went to mothers with children and there's a lot of people here that did bring their kids so right uh, I, unfortunately for me they were all booked up so i'm in the hotel right. <laughs> so um <laughs> the conversation to decide to obviously come without your family how tough was that and obviously did it in the best interest of cash um what did you think, you know, when you guys were going over, you know, what you what you guys should do, when was it like, okay, you'll just stay, you know, Mick, Cash, stay in um, Australia, and I'll tackle this on my own? Yeah, I mean, well, in Australia, first of all, they did a really good job of um, sort of putting us in lockdown and getting a hold mm -hmm. of the whole COVID thing early on. It was probably mid-March. Um, that basically we went to stage four lockdown mm -hmm. and, um, you know, could only go out for workouts or a grocery store, or, you mm -hmm. know, to visit, to take care of family members. So it was quite under control there in Australia. But as we got closer and once they announced that the season was going to happen, um, you know, I just kept a close eye on the amount of cases that were mm -hmm. happening in America and especially in Florida when they announced that this was right. going to be the definite location. And I remember just being in Australia Googling it, you know, every day. And we had a group chat with our team happening. And, um, you know, it was like 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 new cases a day. And I was just, you know, I don't even know if this is worth it, really. Right. So, coming, so you you flew uh, from... <laughs> it just, it's a bit scary because you don't know how it's going to affect you. Um, it could have on you. so. Just um, one of us than all of us, so <laughs> right. I just came by myself. Makes sense. Now that makes sense. Um, so coming from you, obviously had to fly uh, across the world to to be in the bubble. Um, what was the travel like? Were there any type of? Did you have to get like a work visa? Was there any type of like special um, permission to be able to fly from Australia to uh, Florida to Orlando, um, or did you or did you just like fly to another country and flew, flew from there to um, uh, Florida. Yeah. Um, so the borders in Australia have also been closed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, no one's allowed in unless you're an Australian citizen or have a, a work exemption or something. So, but the tricky thing with me is I have an Australian um, passport and also an American passport. And normally, right. um, like when I leave Australia and come to America, I just show my American passport right. because of I can't get a visa or anything. So I always travel on the passport that uh, of the country I'm going to. Okay. So I knew that there was restrictions and the team like Washington knew that there were restrictions um, as far as, you know, Australians leaving Australia. But because I was just planning on showing my American passport, I didn't think right. it was a big deal. 
so they booked me a flight. Um, I showed up at the airport, like drove the two hours to the airport, mm -hmm. <laughs> showed up, said my goodbyes to my family, you know, which was like hard enough. Right. And I get into the airport and they actually stop you like right inside the doors. Mm -hmm. um, and they first just asked for my passport and they, my, I gave them my American passport and they said, okay, like, why are you here? Do you have a, a working visa here in Australia? And I said, no, I'm actually a dual citizen. And they said, okay, well, can I see your Australian passport? So I gave them my Australian passport and they took it away and they were gone for like 15, 20 minutes. And they came back and said, because you're actually an Australian citizen as well, you have to have a travel exemption, right. which I hadn't got. So um, ended up leaving the airport and had to apply for that. And it put me back about a whole week right. um, before that was able to come through. So I had a bit of issues there. But as far as the actual travel, um, mm -hmm. the team was really nice to me and um, got me business class just to sort of keep me separate and a right. little bit safer from everyone else. Yeah. So I flew on United. It's the only airline going international from Australia because mm -hmm. all the Australian airlines have, have shut down international right. flights. So they get, you know, they, you have to make sure you have the mask and they, um, they were really clean. They didn't serve um, many meals or drinks yeah. or anything just to, to limit that contact. But um, it was okay. Yeah. I mean, the actual travel was probably what I was most worried about, but right. I felt fine and I felt comfortable. That's good. That's good. I know like for people who don't know, like flying from Australia to anywhere in America is like, it's, <laughs> it, it is like a 20 plus hour venture yeah. <laughs> like I've, I've done it so it's like i get it like it's a lot of traveling um yeah it's it's what 14 hours just like sydney to la yeah. so it's a long day and then if you're going of course i was going to the east coast right so, yeah yeah no doubt so lay you played in phoenix a year ago and now you're in washington you're a free agent correct um yes so what was the decision like to decide? Because obviously when you're a free agent, you have the luxury to, uh, to decide, really, obviously, where you want to sign to. What made you decide to sign in Washington? Um, well, actually, so after the uh, – leading up to the Olympics in 2016, I took the WNBA season off just to right. train with our national team and get ready for the Olympics. So after that was over – I was um, looking at just going to a team for the little like month, month and a half afterwards. And mm -hmm. Washington actually picked me up. So I, I played here in 2016 for, it was like, it was not only like 10 games, but right. I really enjoyed the experience. Love Coach Tebow, um, you know, his style of play, what they were doing. And actually um, wanted to come back to Washington the following year, but, you know, they already had some locked in contracts and things and people at my position. So. Um, it didn't happen, and I always kind of stayed in contact a little bit with them, and and, um, and then finally when I was a free agent uh, after this last season, uh, they got in contact with me, were interested, and um, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Obviously, they just came off winning the championship, right? Um, but uh, the team's changed quite a bit um, due to this whole COVID thing, um, but, you know, I just always have admired the coach and yeah. even I, I speak to people from people from Australia have played for him and, and obviously a lot of people in America and I don't think <laughs> it's rare when you can't find anyone that has something mm, bad to say right, about a coach right so I mean it says a lot not only about his you know X and O knowledge but just him as a person he's just right. a quality person that cares about his players so how has your experience been obviously you're playing in these games that on television they look like because you hear the crowd noise on the television and you know it, it sounds like uh it sounds on television like there's is a stadium full of people you obviously know it's not <laughs> how has it been playing in like such a quiet environment yeah to be honest i was really worried because i thought that it would just feel like a scrimmage you mm -hmm. know that everything would just feel um sort of like real casual but right. they've done a really good job with like as you've seen on the tv the setup's really nice um yeah it looks like we're in a nice arena mm -hmm. um and they they've hired a dj so the dj comes in plays music um you know everything else feels the same as far as the game it's just um I guess <laughs> you have to be a little bit more careful when you're calling out your plays, you know, right. try to be a little bit more secretive and make yeah. sure you huddle up because obviously everybody can hear everything. Not so. a doubt. 
that's probably the biggest difference. But once you start playing, you know, it all feels normal and natural. It feels like a normal game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they play a lot of music and the noise really helps. So. No doubt. I, I, it's nothing like um, – <laughs> you're no stranger, obviously, to, like, field stadiums. You played in um, – you played the WNBL, and mm -hmm. um, you're obviously a staple. Like, you're well-known in the league. And um, a lot of those games, I, I, having myself been able to, you know, cover the UC Capitals and be at a lot of the games, like, the WNBL is – it is like – I feel like it's like one of those leagues that's – it's like religion out there. Like, everybody is tuned in. The stadiums <laughs> are loud. They're packed. The fans are awesome. And then you kind of go from that to – few months later you're playing in the WNBA and it's just like nobody yeah. there. It's insane. So it's, I, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it's definitely different. Um, right. You know, it, it's it's strange. But uh, you know, as the games go on you just get more comfortable with it and um, you know, it kind of makes it easier because you can communicate with each other, you mm -hmm. know, from the bench to, to the players that are out on the right. court or, or vice versa. So um I think for the most part, everyone's probably used to it by now. Right. So the WNBL, actually, just since we are on the topic of it, they are not taking any imports this year because right. of, obviously, because of coronavirus. And there's a league that every team usually gets, like, two imports uh, per team. Um, for you, obviously, you have a dual citizenship. Do you plan on still playing in the WNBL uh, for this upcoming season? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, hopefully they push the season back to start. Mm -hmm. Normally it starts beginning of October. They pushed it back to about mid-November mm -hmm. at the moment. So hopefully it's still able to go ahead. But, yeah, that was a big decision they made a couple months ago. Um, obviously just with the uncertainty of mm -hmm. the whole COVID. And then most of the people that were getting sick in Australia were coming off of international flights right. or the cruise ships. So because the borders are shut, and I think they really have no plan of opening the border until right. after there's a vaccine. So oh, um, wow. they're just, yeah, they're just trying to be really safe, mm -hmm. and, which I'm, I'm thankful for. You know, yeah. obviously, we've got to make sacrifices in other areas of our life. But for the most part, I think Australia's done a really good job handling it all. No, no doubt, no doubt. So you've played in... So I haven't played in the WNBL. You actually are part of a league that is very vocal about the social injustice that the indigenous people of the country face. And you also play in the WNBA, which is another league that has been vocal for years now about social injustice in America. Um, how does it feel for you to be a part of two leagues that really fight for people of color like ourselves? Like you have the backing and support because usually these are fights, you know, sometimes you have to honestly fight by yourself and you don't really have the backing of the people who employ you to be able to speak out about, you know, some the injustices that face, you know, Australia, America, essentially all over the world. You having been able to obviously experience that support from the WNBL and now obviously with the WNBA, what does it feel like to be a part of two major organizations that are truly in the fight for social justice for all walks of life and all people yeah i mean it feels good obviously because this is something that's uh, that's been going on for such a long time in both countries and really all over the world so yeah. to finally get the support um obviously from the leagues is great because if, even if you just look back a couple of years ago in the in the wba um where the league wasn't supporting yeah. the, the black lives matter movement so um you know it's just showing the progress of um, both countries because in Australia as well um, you know we've got a lot of uh, national team players for the men's side mm -hmm. that play in the NBA so they have bigger platforms yeah. obviously are looked up to more and they've done a really good job um, of working with us as the Opals the women's national mm -hmm. team um, as far as just going to Basketball Australia um, you know having that open communication with them and, and Basketball Australia has been really receptive of mm -hmm trying to hire more indigenous people right. um, amongst the, you know, the league. And then also we're trying to do other things. I think the biggest thing is education, right. um, obviously, in, in America and Australia, because, you know, at the start of it all, a lot of the Australians were like, oh, you know, that's only in America. That doesn't really happen here. And I think right. a lot of people's um, eyes were open once um, a lot more media mm -hmm. uh, shed light on it, that it, 
you know, it was just, it's just a major issue in Australia. And I think, um, you know, being a part of the national team in Australia, we're really trying to um, come up with ideas um, so that when we go to competitions internationally, right. like FIFA competitions as well, like one of our big things we're trying to do now is have like the Aboriginal artwork on our jerseys. Right. Where we've never really had that before. So it's just little things that just, you know, educate people or get people to ask questions of what it is. And then you can delve farther into that mm -hmm. and really start talking about the issues and what happens and, and all those sort of things. But it feels good, especially here in the WNBA where we've come to this bubble and, um, you know, it was a major, a major thing for us is that we, mm -hmm. we didn't want to put it on the back burners. We wanted to right. still make sure um that it's out there and with so many games on tv um yeah. that's helped a lot as well because you know you see Breonna taylor on a jersey you see the black lives matter on her shirts um this week we're honoring sandra bland yeah. um so i think as we go on throughout the season we're going to recognize more and more um you know of the injustices and not only the the whole black lives matter but it's also pushing um for people to get out and register to vote so that's yeah. another big thing that we're trying to do as well how important is it to you, like, making sure that people register to vote? And how important is it to you, like, use your platform in order to let people know that voting is so important? Like, for me personally, I believe that if you're a citizen of whatever country, you have a dual citizen, so you can vote in this in America. Yeah. Uh, people, you know, I feel like some people don't take voting seriously, especially people like, in, like, are now my age, like that whole Gen Z millennial you know, we're 35% of voters and yeah. not enough of us vote, but you are using your platform to help push the initiative. What is voting? Why is voting so important to you? I mean, voting is the only way you can make, you know, it's the best way to make a change. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think where it really became obvious and an issue that so many people weren't voting was the last election right. where, you know, and then someone like, you know, Trump has been, um, you know, he got voted in and, and, you know, a lot of people were not happy about that. Yeah. So I think from that point forward, I think people have really started to recognize, um, mm -hmm. the importance of it and how each individual can actually make a difference by yeah. the time you, you know, get everyone together. So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully, uh, <laughs> everyone gets <laughs> that on votes and, yeah. you know, just knows that it, it's, it's a privilege and it's yeah. a right for everyone and everyone should be involved with that. No. Yeah, no doubt. I think it's so important to vote, but I also think the way the WNBA is handled, you know, pushing the initiative is has been lovely to see. And then, two, on top of that, you know, I, I say this, I feel like to every woman I've interviewed for Inside the Wubble, but the WNBA, I feel like, has always been the standard for any type of social. Like, the WNBA has been doing this before everybody. I have to keep reiterating that because – like the uncomfortable conversations and the things that people, the truths that people may not want to hear. The WNBA is, was the first, was one of the first leagues to really push the initiative. And it's awesome to see about how things are, you know, maturing and blooming. So, yeah. so let's talk basketball a little bit. Okay. E, EDD has op opted out. So you're not, well, you're without last year's um, MVP of the league. But the team is coming, obviously coming off a championship, and the team is different now. But the Mystics are—you guys are a really experienced team. You know, you a lot of you have been there before. You've played in big games. A lot of players on the team have played in big games. Even though players that like Christy Tolliver, she also opted out. How have you guys gelled as a team now, having to obviously? The players that opted out—they opted out for the right reasons. It was their right to do what they felt they was being best for them. Some people opted out just for, to fight, you know, to be right in the mix of this, you know, social, the social injustice that goes on in the country. But for you guys that are back, that are still with the team, have you, have you guys gelled and, you know, you know, people probably write you guys off because of, you know, Della Don not be there. But I feel like obviously the team speaks for itself. You have a lot of players who have played a lot of big minutes, been in a lot of big games, have been in the moment. Um, what do you guys say to the naysayers? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I think definitely 100% a lot of people um, didn't expect much much from us this season. Um, 
you know, even as we won the first game against Indiana, it was like, oh, well, it's, it's, it's Indiana. Right. You know, they were a lottery pick team last year. And then, you know, we beat Connecticut. And it was like, oh, well, Connecticut didn't play well. And then we beat Seattle. And yeah. still, you know, Seattle's the favorite. Right. And they're like, oh, well, Seattle looked tired. And it's just like, <laughs> it's always an excuse, you know, there's right? always an excuse for the team that we beat, which is fine. Um, you know, I think people underestimate um, – the power and the importance of team basketball, yeah. which is what we do here at Washington. I agree. And, you know, don't, even though last year they had Della Dawn and, and Natasha Cloud and, um, you know, Latoya Sanders, Krista Tolliver, all these players that aren't here this year, um, you know, it's still, you know, there's still one ball for everyone. Right. And, <laughs> you know, I think that's the problem with some of the teams and they're trying to figure out is like, we've got all these, stars and all these big players but how do we get them to mesh and put their ego to the side yeah we're here i think it's just like a lot of people who are ready to prove themselves you know right. a lot of people that played pretty pretty good backup roles on the championship team last year um we only have one star to returning who she's elevated her game as well so i'm just super proud of everyone that has stepped up um and you know we understand that if you play together um, you can beat a lot of the teams that yeah. that have more talent than I have. I think that from like just watching the, you know, from watching a lot of the games, uh, I think the one thing about the Mystics I feel like has been impeccable is you guys play really well in the half court. Yeah. Because you, know, you guys feed, you guys feed, it's, it's such unselfish basketball. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's about getting the best possible shot. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think that's the thing. Like, I feel like in all sports, regardless of talent, Sometimes if you play well-coached, you know, team basketball or whatever sport it is, you can see it doesn't really matter what names are on the back of the jersey at the end of the day. Yeah. So it is. it has been a treat to watch you guys because I definitely know a lot of people counted you guys out, and it's, it's, it's nice to see that you guys are proving the naysayers wrong. Yeah, um, thank you. No problem, no problem. So before I let you go, Leigh, I thank you so much for coming on. Um, the one thing I do ask all the women that come on here is, obviously, we have been in a, a, a worldwide, you know, pandemic. Some countries you can't go to. Uh, some places, even in America, like, it's it's not really the safest place to even, you know, travel to. Um, so we don't, we lack a lot of the freedoms that, you know, we miss. Um, like, I want to go to see a movie so bad. <laughs> you know, I just want to be able to <laughs> sit in the theater with my popcorn and candy and, and see a movie, but obviously we can't do that. that. Sounds Nice. Yeah. yeah, like I miss, I miss, that's the one thing I probably miss most because I go to the movies by myself. Like I'll go to the movies yeah. by myself and I miss it. For you, what is one thing that you miss most about um, having your freedom or just, you know, being back home? Oh, that's tough. I mean, so I'm normally like a really independent person. Yeah. So I don't really like people doing stuff for me. Um, but it's just simple things like I just want to – well, there's two things. So I'm, in, I'm independent, so I wish that I could just, like, go to the grocery store and get my own groceries yeah. or go get my food. Like, I don't know. I just <laughs> – I'm weird with that kind of thing. Right. But then also I'm just a really outdoorsy person, so I yeah. miss being at the beach, um, just being outside. We, we do have a pool, um, but I, I miss the beach probably the most, mm -hmm. um, you know, just laying in the sand and, and – relaxing because to me that's how I escape and that's when right. I truly feel relaxed is just like laying on the beach soaking up some sun mm -hmm. having fun um you know I try I, I go for a bike ride mm -hmm. <laughs> usually every <laughs> night because I, just because I'm bored right. and to get some fresh air so here in the hotel like the room's nice but the window doesn't open yeah um, there's no balcony so I just feel like I'm stuck in all this stale yeah. air so I try to get out of <laughs> can the stale air i like that one stale yeah. air i'm, I'm I know, adding that. i open my door but then when i open my door people always you know stop me and say hi or you know i'm like i just want air and leave me alone i'm relaxing so. i think that one i'm gonna keep that one stale air i like that one i like that one if you're just yeah. in your room too long, I'm like, I'm tired of stale air. I need to go outside. Yeah, I gotta I like get that. outside. So, I'll, and it's it's still like 80 degrees at night. Yeah. and 60 percent humidity, but I just I just need to get outside. I'm yeah. I, I like to be outside. I'm an outdoors person. So no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Is there anything anything new you may have picked up while you're here? Like I know you know I've talked about some people. You know puzzles. There's been games. Uh, obviously, a lot of people binge shows on Netflix and Hulu. 
for you, have you picked up anything new that, you know, obviously to just keep your mind sharp or just, you know, obviously to pass the time? Um, well, I've actually started like studying how to, um, do like day trades, like penny stocks. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's this guy, like this mentor that I've, um, uh, uh, hooked up with and basically he, um, puts out like webinars every week and then also has like heaps and heaps of YouTube videos and stuff. Right. So, um, I've been trying to watch that, pay attention to that and, and study that just, um, sort of as a, another way to make income and then possibly if I can hopefully get good at it, that's, that can be what I do after basketball. <laughs> right. Don't be like the Wolf of Wall Street. Jordan Belfort no. <laughs> showed you how not to do it. <laughs> no, no, I won't. I won't. <laughs> no doubt. But, Leigh, thank you so much for coming on Inside the Wubble. I appreciate you so much. Good luck the rest of the way. Um, this probably won't be the last time I'll, I want to connect with you. Um, so thank you so much for coming on my platform. It means the world. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to see you. Same, no problem. See you soon. All right, bye.